Hey everyone, I'm Jason from Trading Games. I'm Chris. And today we wanted to get right to it with our third video talking about collecting video games and uh, selling video games. And what we're really going to get into is some hard numbers on basically how the last year performed. We got some good solid numbers that show growth and kind of talk about, you know, possibly how the next year, what projection is going to be for the next year. Let's really kind of break it down by platform, by generation, um, and give you some good solid numbers. And maybe people haven't looked at these numbers and realized how much growth there actually was and how much potential there is. Um, uh, first, though, we did have a couple questions from uh, in comments from our previous videos, and so we've been asking you to ask questions. We want to make sure we answer them. <laughs> uh, so uh, pretty much only have like two questions to go over. Um, first one was, what do you guys think about the Siphon Filter 3 for the recalled pre-9-11 edition? Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, for Siphon Filter 3, the uh, to go over quickly, the original release had an American flag on the cover with, you know, the main character with gun out and everything like that. Uh, and it came out on 11, November 5th, 2001. So they kind of felt, you know, because of the 9-11 attacks, it was inappropriate. So they changed the cover artwork for a retail release. However, there was some of these that had made it because they were already ready and good to go on it. Um, so one of the commenters actually, as far as I understand, has a copy of this and they were curious what we thought the value of it would be. Uh, what's really important to point out is that the majority of these copies had a hole punched in the UPC, uh, and this commenter says that they have a copy that does not have that. Um, so I have a little bit of information on this. Um, just a couple quick numbers. Available on eBay right now, you can find a raw copy of that game, and it's, it's cracked like crazy. Raw means not graded, okay? Still factory sealed. Um, they're asking $2,200 for it. There's a wad of graded 6.5A copy that's available for $1,000 and an 8.0A plus that's available for $5,000. Now that's what's actively available on eBay. I went through and looked at the past year of what actually sold. I saw a raw copy end last month for $900, uh, graded 9.4 A+, which ended two days ago on the 24th, or I'm not sure what the date is, Am I, it, this week, um, for $2,750, and then a complete in box copy for $325. What's interesting, if you look at the numbers on Heritage over the past year, you had an 8.5 A+, sell for $700, a 9.2 A sell for $1,100, and that was in 2019, and a 9.6 A sold for $1,800. Now that's on uh, November 20th. So what's actually interesting is the most recent eBay sale sold higher than any of these heritage sales and it was at less of a grade and there's a one month disparity between those two. So a $2,750 sale on eBay a few days ago and an $1,800 sale on heritage a month ago. There's been some people talking about it though. That's also true. It's the little bit of top topic right now. Yep. Um, so what's important though, uh, I want to address your specific question. If you really have a copy that doesn't have a UPC punch, uh, number one, I'd love to see it. So like, uh, please send pictures of it over to the Trading Games website. In all of my research, I couldn't find a single copy that didn't have it. And as you pointed out, it really might be one of a kind. Um, anything that's one of a kind for me always more worries me at first than anything else until I do my research on it. Um, so, you know, obviously I'd want to see it for authenticity, but I mean, without that punch, I mean, it really would differentiate it from everything else. Um, so as you said, I mean, the sky really could be the limit on that. I, I haven't personally seen one. The only copy that I could see that didn't have a hole punch was the complete in box copy. And with enough research, it kind of looked like they uh, Frankenstein together a case because it all was in a single jewel case, single jewel case versus a double jewel case, which is what all of the graded copies and any other copy I've seen. Uh, the other interesting thing I'd like to point out, I was surprised to see a CIB copy because that game never hit a retail release and because most people knew it was rare, it came from a Sony rep. I'd argue that there's going to be more sealed copies available than open copies. No, no one really opened that unless they really wanted to see the inside, which the disc actually is different. Uh, so it is a different disc. It's not just different uh, box art. Um, I'd say more copies are going to be sealed. So uh, great question. You know, my guess, I'm going to go off of it being punched, you know, depending on how it grades. I mean, you're looking at 3000 I'd probably put a $10,000 ceiling on that if it graded perfect, but with it being punched, uh, the people that would, or not punched, the people that would care about that might care a lot. So it could do really, really well. And I would definitely say it's something worth grading. Uh, you did say you were worried about sending it in the mail. 
I, I haven't had too much personal uh, problems with that. I use FedEx when I send a wad. I, I don't trust UPS for anything. I had, um, this, I had the exact same feeling when I was mailing, you know, the potential $20,000 worth of video right. games. And it is a little nerve-wracking, but, I mean, there's you could get in a crash driving there just as much or, it's, it's you know, important. somebody could rob you. You never, uh, There's so many variables that uh, I... And it's definitely scary, and you sit there and click that refresh shipping button, you yeah. know. Uh, I was sending off an order with a friend of mine last month, and, you know, we got our order submitted to WADA, and I was like, man, I'm not sending this off till Monday, because it was the week before Black Friday, and I made the point, like, I'm not <laughs> mailing anything during Black Friday week. Like, that postman's just going to punt that package, you that, know. That, that was so, a good calculation. Yeah, it's I, just kind of like... I mail nothing during just, the holidays. Yeah, it's important. You know, so that you do have those risks, obviously. Yeah. So far... I've had smooth sailing with any of my grading events, be it CGC, WADA, PSA, I've really had no issues, but issues do happen. Um, so, you know, shipper beware, I guess. Yep. Uh, and then another question we had, uh, we had another customer that said they had a really rare game, not 100% sure what game it was, but it was in a cut rental box, and is that something that WADA would grade? Um, in a... Uh in a clamshell. Clam so as far as I perceive it, I have a, a similar, uh, there's a really rare Super Nintendo game called Hagane. I have a cut rental in a clamshell of Hagane, right? So it's the front flap, the top flap, and the back flap. And that's how it was cut and then form-fitted to go into a clamshell. Um, a lot of rental stores did that practice, right? They, they didn't care. They put it in their, you know, clamshells and people would carry that over to the counter and whatever it may be. Um, I don't think WADA would grade that. I would encourage you that if you really think it's something that you'd want them to take a look at, uh, you could definitely email info at WADA Games. Um, right now, a lot of them are like a little off for the holidays, so I wouldn't expect an answer right away. Uh, in my personal experience, I don't think it would likely be worth grading if they could grade it at all. Uh, since it's formed for a clamshell, WADA's cases, uh, what really separates them from uh, VGA is they are non tamper proof cases is how they word it so long story short they're form fit for each style of game an NES game fits it the box perfectly the Super Nintendo perfect and so on and so forth so anything that deviates from that uh, they're currently not making custom um, casings for different games um, so to answer your question probably not I, I, I probably wouldn't mess with grading it and I also I believe in grading CIB games a lot of people don't but I don't believe in grading loose carts um, anything that I've seen if someone slabbed a cartridge only it's selling for less than what I would see the cartridge sell for on its own doesn't mean that market won't come up someday but I mean if you want to make the argument that you know like a graded video game can't be played when it's like you're really taking that to another level if you're graded in just a loose right. cart, you know. Now, the only exception I have to that is I've graded my test cartridges. And yeah, that, that that's a totally different yeah, thing, that's, you know. That's totally different. Um, you know, I have another cool. thought. I have another yeah. thought on this uh, one. The new trend, and there's been some collectors who want to collect rental store stuff. Yeah. So a cut Hagani box, let's say it's Hagani, just like you have. Yep. Um, in the past. Ten dollars, yeah. twenty dollar box. Of course, we know it probably. What is that? Seven, eight hundred dollars now. Box. I, I'd say that box is at least eight. Yeah, yeah maybe but six, cut, seven. Nobody would have paid for it. Nobody would have wanted it. But now, there's some people who are building rental collections just for display. Yeah. And uh, they're probably willing to pay more at its actual value. Not more than its value. Right. There's no way. Well, and, and I'm personally someone I love rental stickers. So a lot of people like hate stickers and want to take them off. I don't, you know, uh, if I had it on a really expensive game on the label, I'd, I'd probably want that sticker to be gone. Uh, but again, I'll use my Hagane box as a good example. Uh, a lot of people claim that's a blockbuster only exclusive title, uh, like Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, for example. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's not. My copy has a Burke's Home Video sticker on it, and I've also seen a family video copy of that game, or excuse me, uh, Hollywood Video, and Hollywood Video would brand their cartridges, so they would literally like burn into the plastic Hollywood Video. So I've seen a Hollywood Video Hagane out in the wild, too. Um, so, you know, I like the stickers and stuff and tracing the history on it. To me, it, it's super cool to see that, and mm -hmm. so it gives it a lot more individualistic character to me. Um, it gives it a, a pedigree or a, oh. like a like a lineage of you know where it came from. Yep, and that's an important story. Yep. Uh, so long story short, I don't know. I would keep your rare game and your clamshell and your own personal collection and love it forever. Is what I'd do with it. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. What we'd really like to get into now and really start talking about. Let's talk about the year in review. Um, 2020 is when this video comes out. 
very last hours of this year. Yep. And it's been a crazy year. Crazy. Um, it's been a crazy year for, we all know all the obvious reasons, but we're here to talk about video games and the crazy growth we saw in Spike and video games. Right. And then also let's talk, you know, a little bit about like what we think is going to happen too. Um, in, in the growth, in growth, when we're talking about growth, we're talking about mostly value in growth um, is what we're talking about. Right. You know, how much the year where they started at prices compared in the end of December of 2019 and where they ended up in 2020. And just to start for the reference reasons, and we've got a lot of information wrote down here, um, just so everybody knows, we're mainly, when I did all these percentages of growth, we're mainly talking about CIB, complete in box titles. Um, there's not enough data still on sealed and graded games to really build a database. Um, we just know they're going for a lot. And um, so that's mainly what we're talking about. And then that then that falls into the problem with NES is is different perceived than PS1. PS1 is almost always collected right. CIB. Yeah. But l we're not going to get really nitty nitty gritty. And then the second little disclaimer is is to do all these percentages across all these different platforms, over 30 platforms I think, um, or maybe not that many, but is I used game value now, um, and I can look at 2019 prices for CIB average, you know, across the whole library for each platform, then and now, and uh, it was basically a you know started at $15 per per title on average in 2019, went up to $25, um, you know, it's a $9 increase basically, which it represents a 57% growth. Um, in a year, um, so that's how we're going to talk about these numbers. So you know where we're, where we're coming yeah. from with it. So I, I, was ta I called Chris excited about talking about this in this video uh, last night, trying to prepare for this, and um, oh. he, he he was shocked by some of these numbers. You know, I, I don't think it's any surprise that if you're into the video game collecting hobby at all, you've seen a crazy increase this year, mm -hmm. and there's. Obviously, tons of external factors that have affected that in some way. Uh, you know, COVID-19 really saw a lot of shifting. You'll hear a lot of people in any collector's hobby call it like pre-COVID pricing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, with that being said, you know, it, it's slowly kind of starting to restabilize, and that's something I think, you know, as being at a store is something we had to work around all year long, right? Um, you know, some prices were astronomically just, just tripling overnight, like things you wouldn't expect. Um, but I think, you know, across the board, everything saw an increase. There's not a single system that depreciated an overall value. Um, but, you know, a lot of factors come into play in that. A lot more people are home. Uh, they're wanting to play games. I personally think the biggest factor in increase is that there were more people wanting to play games. Uh, I hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, stimulus money and, um, you know, lots of people were getting unemployment money from being home and stuff. And don't get me wrong, those like ha play into it. There, That definitely exists. But I just don't think it's as big of a factor as people were just home and playing video games. And, and that's, that's what really makes these numbers yeah. solid is because we were looking at a growth over the whole, in, like Nintendo, the whole entire platform, 730 something 30 games. You know, the average per game went up a lot because even the, the people were playing the less expensive games. Agreed. And so it really does, really shows a growth. Next year, you know, people might not be playing. Like this year, Wii was crazy. Yeah. Wii, uh, Wii was insane. People came back to Wii, they dug it out of closets. This is in the Midwest where we're at in St. Louis. You know, people were playing Wii like crazy and connect games and yeah. stuff like that because there was nothing else to do. And, and sports games, yep. holy moly, you, you know, sports games. I personally Ooh, uh. sold a lot of sports games on eBay this year. And, you know, you'd start noticing games that were four or five dollars were going for 20 to 25 dollars. And I personally attest that to sports being canceled. You know, uh, you're seeing a lot of those games start to kind of balance back out. Um, going down you know, to pre yep. and pre 2019 levels nope. and and don't turn your eye on sports games if you know what you're looking for there, there there's you can make profit on everything now with that being said please don't bring in a stack of Madden 2000 in here and expect you know to get yeah. a lot of money for it. there's those specific sports titles that hold a value there was there was no college sports yeah, no. so NCAA stuff crazy. went crazy now they're talking about bringing NCAA back I've heard nope. you know possibly and 
everybody started tearing through every single mm -hmm. family video and and not blockbusters, but everybody started tearing through mm -hmm. pawn shop, buying up all sports games. The market got flooded. We did see some high numbers, but now they're going they're going back down. So uh, that that attributes to a lot of these numbers. It really does, you know. I mean, a couple random titles off the top of my head. All the street games were doing really, really well. NFL head coach did really, really well. Like you said, the NCAA games were really good. I mean, heck, you even see, saw some Maddens. I think it's like Madden 17 on 360. It's like 30 bucks, right? Um, so And on Xbox One, it was four dollars yeah exactly it didn't grow on xbox one yeah sport you know because it was plentiful sports games on the current generation system are like a car if you go buy the newest madden the second you walk out the door it's worth half what you just spent for it it's just that simple yep. and it you know it comes hard as a store getting that kind of stuff in too because like you know well, we're still going to buy it for close to what it's worth now and then over time it's just going to depreciate to where we usually end up like if we buy too many of them, we lose on them over time, you know. Well, let's let's start with the headline. Yep. The the system that we saw with the most growth for 2019, GameCube. GameCube. It uh, started out with an average of sixteen dollars and twenty cents uh, per per title in December of 2019, and by the end of this year, we're seeing on average per title price of twenty eight dollars and seven cents which is an $11.87 increase, which is a 73% increase. Um, the biggest mover um, across the board. And, um, you know, at 16, we tell people when they come in our store, the average price for a good game is $14.95. Yep. And that's on like 360, Xbox One, PS4, PS3, PS2, $14.95 games are really good. Yeah, for sure. Not rare. No, but good. Good, good games. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that's right where the 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 GameCube fell in, fell into that price range. But now they're up to twenty eight because now anything on GameCube that's remotely good is twenty five dollars, and, and this shows it's it. Not so. more. If if you got Mario in it, it's fifty. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. All those titles really, yeah, up to a hundred. Yeah. You know, um, something that I think I noticed with GameCube, I, I think because it's seen such an increase. Um, you are starting to see some of this come down a little bit, but not really. A lot of the prices, you know, I always like to use like a blind example, but you know, Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door, in my mind forever, is a $40 complete game. It's up to about 120 in some cases 150 uh, and now it's probably closer around 100 but it's still like doubled and stayed, right? If not more, that's yep. about a 150% increase there's, almost. There's some people just... Hundred dollars? Yeah, that's, man, it's a great game, hundred dollars, who cares? And, you know, it's not 400. And, you know. What you'll see with the GameCube is it's that right age demographic, right? Um, it's it's the perfect storm of what makes something quote unquote collectible. Uh, the supply is less than the demand. Um, it has the nostalgia factor that's attached to it. Uh, it's not a huge set as far as I 100% know off the top right. of my head. So there's the set collectors are kind of starting to go for it. And mm -hmm. because of that, some of the more uncommon games like Top Angler. A uh, Top Angler. <laughs> uh, Auto Modelestia. Uh, those games that were like under the radar, that were like 10 or $15 games when people started going for the sets and realized, oh my gosh, I can't find these anywhere. God, there was like the Bad News Baseball or something like that too. It was like a, a little one. Uh, they started all broke $100, you know, uh, for a fishing game, a cell shaded racing game that I could buy on the Xbox for $7, you know. I think I have a PS2 copy right behind me right now for $19.95, you know. Um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time and in the description try to reproduce uh, this this little list that I made here. Type it all up so that I because I had to do some work to get this list. It wasn't presented to you on Game Value Now, um, and because going through all these is just a little too much for the video. Um, but you know everything saw 50 percent increase almost. Uh, I, but they were starting out really low, mm -hmm. like 360 games, and um, you know. They they were starting at six dollars or seven dollars on average. So any you know if they go up to ten or eleven, you know, that's a fifty sixty percent yeah. increase. So those have big numbers of growth. Um, what a lot of people want to hear about is what's really collectible is let's talk about NES. Mm. So on NES now, my prices are corrected from what Game Value now sh shows because I took Steam events out of the equation because um, Steam events went from twenty two thousand to forty two thousand. So it really skews the the the. Price per average per title. Forty grand for one game. You know? Yeah. So and 
Um, among the other platforms, they didn't have any really crazy ringers that really killed the price. So, so NES averaging about eighty-six dollars per box complete title, and this 20, would be in, good, in twenty nineteen. In twenty nineteen, that's in good shape, of course, and um, ended at about one hundred eight dollars per title, um, twenty-seven dollars and thirty-two cents increase per title, which is about a twenty twenty-four percent, twenty-five percent increase. Um, over the year. Now that's a very established market. Boxed CIB mm -hmm. Nintendo is a very established market. We have lots of price guides and everything. So seeing a 24% increase is, is high. Um, even though it doesn't sound like, oh, like 60%, but you know, in a very established market, you know, we would hope for a 10% increase, yeah. you know, in any stock you ever buy, yeah. you know what I mean? 10% cash out. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, well, not really, but you know, so 24% increase is good. Uh, Super Nintendo had about the same. Um, it showed a little bit more, about 29% increase. Um, the average, it's about the same, about $75 um, in 2019 and $96 now. Um, Nintendo 64 saw bigger growth this year. Um, smaller library, it's at that age demographic, yep. you know. It's, you know, of course, we, I mean, I, I'm not, well, GameCube came out obviously after yep. we just talked about it. it was the biggest. 64 went from being the common 295 395 loose that's loose but under $20 per title right and they've gone up a lot now so and you cannot at least we cannot keep it in it, it, anything if i got it's the 40 box in 64s and put it in there games and put them in there tomorrow they'd be gone within the next 3 days if that yep. so we we saw an average good. price of a box game from, go from 2019 up $56 up to $85 to, you know, almost a $30 price increase on average per box, the 52% increase. So that's a, that's a pretty established market. So that's a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I see 64 growing even more than GameCube because of box conditions. It's harder to keep a box nice. I, I, so I, I can see that. I, I see investing, collecting high grade CIB as more important yeah. than uh, GameCube. GameCube is probably going to always be the same condition, other than disc condition, yeah. you know, which can be fixed, fixed, you know, kind of, on a, on a good proper machine. But, um, so, and keeping GameCube's complete is easy. So 64 should experience more growth yeah. because it's a cardboard box. Um, and, and NES, same, oh. same, same difference, NES. Um, you know, and like I, I kind of mixed up Wii and GameCube a minute ago, but Wii, you know, saw a nice growth, 61% increase. That's just from people playing. But it started out low, $6 yeah. on it, average. Yeah, if you look, the Wii had like the... I was looking at price charting about a week or two ago, and they have like a new tool that tells you the top 10 games that sold of the year and like how they've seen an increase. And I think it was like 8 out of 10 of them were Wii games. But they're all cheap. Mario Galaxy, Wii Sports, Mario Galaxy 2, you know, like a, a new Super Mario Brothers Wii. You notice a pattern here, right? All it, the Mario. Um, yeah. And I think the Wii did really, really well this year because people were stuck at home. So they there was this like idea of it's being active, right? Like, oh, we're going to get up and bowl with the family, right? Yeah. Um, so that really, really helped it. I mean, you were seeing people sell Wiis for 200 bucks on eBay. They were hot you know? for a few months. <laughs> We retail them with a 30-day warranty and all the hookups for $69.95, and that's with, you know, cost involved with that. And they were going 200 plus all day, just buy it now, sold. Okay. So, um, you know, some of the older platforms like Saturn and uh, Dreamcast, you know, they they saw a, a huge growth. Uh, the problem is we just were hardly seeing any Saturn and Dreamcast stuff. Yeah. It's just not coming in in the Midwest. That could be different. Every market is different. So. Um, we could talk about PlayStation as a whole. Um, Look really good. PS1, really. I mean, so PS1 had only a 57% increase, and only. PS2 had a 62% increase. And, you know, oh, so, but you're like, oh, man, so PS2 outperformed PS1. But PS1, that is a solid that is a solid set there. When that set is that large, mm -hmm. averaging went up from $15 on average per title to $25 average per title. And... There's hardly any sub. There's barely any. I mean, sports games are cheap, but everything yeah. else is usually ten bucks, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars. So this set is a solid, and it's a huge set. So you know, a fifty-seven percent increase in that. PS3. That's that stuff. I'm amazed there is a growth in that, considering yeah. it was just given away this year. You know. Yeah. Um, but it was just one of those super cheap 
you know what I mean? So any increase is going to make it. It only raised three dollars eighty five cents. Yeah, which average. is a forty five percent increase. But. Yeah. So and the, and you see that in the in the Xbox and the three sixty yep. platform, four dollar increase and a four dollar increase for sixty and fifty percent increase. That's just because it was so cheap to begin with. Um, of course, I, I looked at uh, Master System, Sega Genesis, also the older platforms. Um, Genesis is a pretty established market. You know, everybody knows. There's a couple ringers, I guess, on Genesis though that are really taken off. But uh, Genesis, some pretty high numbers here, averaging in 2019 about almost forty dollars per CIB mm -hmm. game, up to fifty. That sounds really high, but you know, the uh, they, nice ones. Well, I don't know. That that's a solid set too. It's huge, thirty four percent increase. Master System, there has there hasn't been a whole Master System. I can, it has thirty percent increase. Master System games aren't coming in. Well, so they're just not being traded much in anymore. Genesis is still doing okay. Yeah, Here. a lot less box complete than it was. Yeah, more and more and more loose of the same game. Yeah, yeah, Over loose. Time. We do get a lot more loose in. Mm -hmm. So that's just maybe that's what's making the box stuff seem so high. Yeah. you know, at forty dollars, fifty two dollars, fifty three dollars now. Per CIB, but you know we see that Mario threes, yeah, forty forty five dollars. Uh, Mario twos twenty twenty five dollars for cartridge or no CIBs. Oh, they're probably way more than that now. That's a high number for Sonic. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, well, so for Sonic, yeah. yeah. So I mean, so the, I guess this number of fifty three dollars on average per Genesis title is not that high. Um, and kind of the last category that I want to talk about that I'm really into is the pre NES era. So we're talking 2600 ColecoVision and television. You know, I can't throw Turbo Graphics in that mm -hmm. in that section. I can't say that as pre NES. That's more like Super Nintendo Air. Um, so I'm gonna skip that one. But anyways, there's also 5200, 7800, and you know, lots of obscure stuff, so Channel F and all that stuff. But those markets were sh are still showing a nice growth, uh, 20 to 30 percent growth. Um, but the, the crazy thing about those is, is the average for an, for an Atari game, you know, there's some heavy hitters, but you know, Atari's really, really climbing. This number seems high, $100 per average. That's crazy for, for a complete box Atari game? But a box Atari is so rare, yeah. that's the problem. So this, there's a lot of, people don't realize there's so, because it's my specialty, there's mm -hmm. so many super duper expensive Atari games. But the reason I wanted to separate this category is, is because the rare stuff is not coming to market. Yeah, the stuff that skews these Nintendo markets and these Sega markets and these PS One markets uh, for high sales numbers, like, is that's what's raising those up. Is this weird stuff really spiking at the thousand dollar plus mark, especially in Nintendo Super Nintendo, is not happening barely ever in these pre Nintendo categories anymore. Um, when I was super collecting Atari, a lot more was being brought to the market. And it was really going up in price, yeah. um, but the titles that were really killing it ten years ago aren't coming to market anymore. Yeah. They're, they're, they've gone one way into collections, and it's so old; most of it has been dug out now. Yeah. We're not finding any more um, super super duper rare games in closets for Atari era. There still is some, of course, but uh, um, it's just not skewing the prices. That's why the growth seems low. Um, in in those in those fields, um, yeah, forty two percent increase across the board. If you take all these and add them up, overall video games are forty two percent increase this year. And I'd say that's a really good number. CIB. You know, when, when you look at these numbers, I mean, the trends that I see, um, that mid era seems to have the biggest growth. Your PS one, your PS two, your GameCube, your N sixty four. Right um, at that age, it yep. has money. And you brought up a good point that, like, when you're looking at NES, Super Nintendo, even Genesis stuff, they're they're a little bit more of an established market that's been going on. I've been someone that's been on the mindset that, like, Wii and GameCube and stuff was a good thing to buy. I've, I've been buying up last gen personally for the past two or three years now because it will have its time and it will slowly catch up so for me I've been trying to find out the games that I think are the right games to have for each console while they're still cheap enough you know um, I look at it like someone that might have been buying a little Samson you know a deck and I know I use that as an example all the time it's just an easy one to use so um, knows about it. yeah you know but like you know you look back 10 years ago people are like man it's like, $200 for this game you know and it's seen a 700% increase in value, uh, you know, 
we're, we said we wanted to talk about what we think is going to happen next year, right? Yep. Um, so that's this. That's the year in review. That, that's it. The, the, we've seen a 42% increase across the board. Everything is up. There's not a single game system that didn't appreciate based on the set value and the average cost of the game across the board. Um, I think if you would have asked me to guess what it was before I looked at it, I probably would have guessed GameCube from seeing what comes in. Outside of that, I don't know if I would have said that they would have been like PS2 and PS1 and everything that was as high as they were. I think next year, uh, I've been on Team Wii for a long time. I still think the Wii's got more and more room to grow, and I think that so many more people brought them back into their homes. Uh, my prediction for Wii has always been that it's the number one selling console that Nintendo has had. So it's all over 120 million units, uh, which means it has the highest point of entry. Uh, and the big thing about the Wii is it is cluttered with shovelware, right? It, it, there is over 2,000 games. I want to say the complete set's like 2,400 something. Uh, I don't think it's something that a lot of people will go for complete sets. There are already people that have completed it. Um, I would never do that. However, I do think there's what's going to happen is you are going to see what people did with the NES. Yep. They're going to come in there, they're going to have that nostalgia wave, they're going to want to bust out their Wii, they're going to have fun with Wii Sports and new Super Mario Brothers uh, Wii, and then they're going to go, well, what else is there, right? right? No one cared about Panic Restaurant. No one cared about Little Samson. No one cared about, and I mean, no one cared. But for the most part, these aren't the titles that you remember when you were a kid. Uh, basically, what happened is people realized they're harder to find, and then people were like, hey, this game's actually good. Mm -hmm. And thus, they start to gain a cult following. More and more games become popular. Um, I think the Wii has the biggest room to grow for another year, uh, especially because so many more Wiis were in people's households. Mm -hmm. um, I also think 360 has a lot of room to grow. Um, well, it has a lot of room to grow because it's so cheap yep. right now. Ex exactly. So it does have a lot of room to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's not... But is it an investment? I, I personally... Key, key titles. Key titles, yes, but it goes back to what I said last week, which is that uh, I have this argument with a friend of mine a lot, and I don't personally think buying video games is 100% the best investment. I never long, look at it like an investment, not long term. No. There's a difference between making short per term profit, which is something you can easily do is you just you have all the tools to do that right now. Like we don't need to teach you anything for you to go do that. If you know how if you have a cell phone, that's it. All you have to do is look it up, see someone's paying this and I can pay this. Is there room for profit? Boom, that's it. That's 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 the formula. You're done. You're a reseller now. That's all you need to know. It's right? easy. They all have a title. Yep. And, and now I Halo mean, is Halo. I, I like to, I'm, I flip a lot of strategy guides, um, so I'll use my uh, cell phone's camera app, and I'll just scan the what the ICBN number on the back, and that it just pulls it up instantly. It's a lot really, easier really than easy having a Star Wars figure or a GI Joker, yeah. and you don't know what it is. No, and you, it's not labeled. You know, it's like, well, what is this one? And what generation is it? Is a reprint? You know, games are pretty easy. So it's interesting when we're looking at this number because another number that I've busted out before is if you actually look at and you compare these games to retail cost versus now, the majority of games don't sell for more than what they retailed for 25 oh, no. years ago. Oh, no, no, no. Most yeah. games are significantly less. So I'm never someone that's going to tell you to go buy a new game off the shelf thinking it's going to appreciate over time. I am someone that's going to tell you if you have a good eye for video games and you know what to look for and you enjoy it and you do the research. I've been personally hot picking 360. I lost faith in PS3, and we can get into that another time. But 360, PS3, Wii, Wii U, GameCube. Um, my general rule of thumb is if I haven't seen it before, that's probably a good sign, and that I have a very visual memory. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I do is look it up. Well, if if you made it this far in the video, you you can tell we're not talking about the new systems that are out. We're not talking about the growth in. Xbox One, PS4, uh, Switch, not even Wii U. Yeah. Even though that's very that's gone collectible, it's such a small market right yeah. now. And we are not talking about anything handheld. We're not. Oh, that's a good mean, point too. Yeah, we're, we're not talking about any advanced I, Game I mean, Boy. The handheld or growth probably saw a lot this year too. Yes and no. It's just not sought after as much. There's, yeah. there's tons of key titles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially in the Nintendo realm. You know, people want. Everybody wants the same things. Yeah. So. But we're not really getting into that. That's another whole. That's another whole list this long. Um, when we start talking about the handheld market, um, so we're not really getting into those. Those saw the same growth, but man, it's just not coming in either. Yeah, it's hardly true. coming in. DS, uh, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. It's not coming in. The <laughs> stores that have really, like, we go into some of the big, big chain stores. They have boxes of Game Boy games and Advance mostly. You know, yeah. and it's just like this box is A and this box is B. 
they're, they're just gonna they've overpriced them right yeah. now but it'll come around in well, years you know and i see a lot for the 3ds here soon now that it's like retired if you will right where the 3ds it's finally is an no orphan system exactly yeah. they are not supporting it anymore it has its at least right now official last release unless there's like a just dance 2022 for they're some probably, reason they're probably yeah well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 where you hold the 3ds and dance yeah. but like besides that it, it's it's kind of done uh um, there'll probably be more pokemon on 3ds yeah, uh, yeah. i mean now you got the switch and you know yeah. there's a lot of hype about a new switch maybe coming in march so we'll see but mm. again yeah we we didn't do anything and i mean i guess it now we have to call ps4 and xbox one last gen because they are last gen at this point but they, like they kind next of gen are. ain't here yet yeah <laughs> next gen isn't they're here still yet. making i'm playing miles more else on my ps4 right now i don't have a ps5 and i'm still playing the newest title on my ps4 yeah. brand new i i don't consider our ps4 xbox one and sections orphaned yet yeah, by any means close. because they're completely supported still but so. good time to pick up some obscure ps4 titles in my personal opinion been doing that too i'm not talking about uncharted i'm not talking about tekken you know but you might find some weird ones out there like akiba beat or uh Ominent Quartet, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but you know, but then again, that's a speculation too, because at the yeah. end of the day, what's most important, does anyone want it? Doesn't matter if it's rare sometimes, it, does anyone actually want this thing? And I think that there's a lot of lines that get blurred between all Fortnite these collections. On, Fortnite on Xbox One. Yeah. Physical. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Like I that game is worth a lot. Yeah. Well, in the in the realm of yep. Xbox One. Godzilla. On PS4. Yeah, Godzilla. Three hundred dollar game. Godzilla's PS4 doing game. it, man, yeah. Poop Slinger. You know, uh -huh. that is like one of the rarest games in the world, but Oh man. It, it man. exists. It's a real game, you I know. know. It I counts, know. right? It counts. God. So, hurts. That so, stuff that kind of stuff hurts. But me. but that's, you know, it's the same thing as anything else. If there's someone that wants a full set and they count it, it counts. It's not like big chungas. Some some guy didn't fake make it. Someone put it on an order. No one believed it was yeah. real. And then they really went to market with it. So yeah. It should be no different than Bloodstained, uh, anything that comes off a of Kickstarter. Yeah. You know, They count Axiom Verge for Wii U which, or limited run release. There's no different. Yeah. I don't know. So, so this, let's just kind of like put a wrap on this here and... Uh, we were, we were talking about CIB games, complete in box games, for basically this whole thing. And um, for the future, for 2021, and um, I see a lot of growth in Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo? Uh, you called uh, Wii. You called Wii? this GameCube and Wii. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm calling Super Nintendo um, CIB stuff, especially high grade CIB mm -hmm. stuff, growing more than we ever thought would happen. Yeah. High grade, high grade CIB stuff. Those boxes are just like NES. I actually think Super Nintendo boxes are not built as good as a Nintendo box. Nintendo boxes are solid yeah. inside. So they're foam, more hard, easy to get damaged. manual, tight. Uh, Super Nintendo it boxes have a lot of hollow space inside mm -hmm. of them. Um, I think the cardboard is not as glossy, so it's pr more prone to expanding, contracting. You know, and you absorbing. think the styrofoam added to the integrity of the box significantly versus like a cardboard. Insert. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, it yeah, did. It well, even with, the cart, even with the cart, even with the cart in it, stuff, there's yeah. collapsing. Yeah, that's the, exactly. So I think high grade mm. CIB in SNES stuff will have the, the biggest growth, I, I think, when we look back. Yeah. I think Nintendo, I think there's going to be a lot of Nintendo titles that people are finally realizing are rare. So we're going to see a lot of like 50 to $100 games mm -hmm. going for 100 to 200 dollars in the Nintendo range. Um, that are truly rare okay. in, in high grade, but I still, I'm calling Super Nintendo for 21 be the biggest growth. If we're going off like high grade CIB and cardboard, I'd probably go with 64. I think that it's still a little bit, I think with any of these, especially now if we're talking about the high grade CIB and potential grading and stuff like that, like the barrier of entry is high. You have to have money to get into these yep. or luck, you know, you could, find a game for dirt cheap and really really do great on it um but if you're like trying to f specifically buy games too great and turn into profit the barrier entry is high and right now it's you can get decent games for under a grand on 64 and i would challenge you to show me too many of them on super nintendo or All right. you know had a little break there memory card transfer and we made our call we've made our call what we think is going to be hot for 21 and we just want to kind of put a wrap on this video and uh, 
more questions, more comments, and now is probably the time to finally hit that subscribe button and possibly that bell notification. We're having a blast doing this. We're yep. getting great feedback from customers coming in, yep. emails, Instagram. So it's probably time to really, you know, maybe start following the videos. We're gonna try to put this out on a regular basis. Um, let's just look forward to 2021. And we thank everybody for a great year at Trading Games. Um, from the bottom of our hearts, we had a, an amazing year. And, uh, you know, even through all this really hard times, the customers were amazing. You guys, you guys were absolutely amazing. Um, supporting the website and curbside pickup and coming in and everybody being safe and, you know, keeping the store sanitized and safe and uh, good operating. Well, again, thanks for listening to us. It's a lot of fun. We really like doing it and, you know, we want to keep making them for you. So keep on watching and keep communicating and please don't hesitate to ask and we'll keep coming up with stuff to talk about and hopefully you have some good ideas of what you want to hear about. So yeah, maybe we can actually do more of a live thing with the computer open and actually mm -hmm. get some live comments and, uh, Everything. Uh, I think something uh, I'm going to surprise everybody with here is uh, haven't done it in a long time. It's like a tour of the collection. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, just yeah. kind of give a little tour and kind of what I've been up to in my collecting habits. Not part of this series, just you know, a video to insert in the Trading Games YouTube channel, and um, and then we'll probably get some questions from that too. You know, people wanted to see, see something specific. That'd be fun for live, yeah. kind of roaming around. So you know, we've mostly been talking about the value of these things, but like we do have far more interest than just that too. I know a lot of people are interested in a lot of video game history and stuff, and we're both obviously very, very into that. This has just been a fun topic for what we like to talk about right now. Yep. So thank you, and see you next time. Have a good night. Bye. Happy New Year.